Hello, hello, and welcome back to Ghost Light RPG's 24 hour live scream! Ah! Uh, ah! It is, uh, it is, it is early morning. Um, and you, if you are, if it's not morning for you, uh, let us know where you're at, because that's cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, we just finished a, uh, thrilling one shot of cthulhu dark um and we will spend the next couple hours here uh painting uh some some miniatures uh my name is justin uh my pronouns are he him um, and with me today i have graham hello i'm graham also he him uh and really excited to just paint some miniatures i guess the only thing that can get me to paint miniatures is if I do it on camera now. So here we go. Makes sense. It's been a while. Yeah, no, I, it, whenever I stopped doing as much on green room, um, I honestly just kind of stopped painting as much. Like I've, I have a bunch primed and I just haven't done as many really. And it's just um, a real shame. It, it is. is. It is. Um, so, uh, if you are new to ghost light RPGs, welcome. We are a community of theater artists and role players who uh, keep in the lamp lit even when theaters go dark. We are telling stories of all kinds, and right now we are uh, just going to be chatting <laughs> about those stories while we paint. Um, but if you uh, are new, we'd love to get you. Uh, we'd love to have you uh, hit the follow button so you uh, catch all the rest of our shows. All the rest of our uh, upcoming streams today and beyond um and we have a brand new uh patreon as well um that would allow you to um gain access to our discord community um where you can uh, join like tables uh you can kind of have uh insight and uh in what's the word i'm looking for uh you can have uh a Access? say a say uh oh, yeah, in yeah. in future streams and things like that so um anyway uh subscribe on twitch subscribe on patreon support the show if you like what you see um all right without further ado let's just jump in let's let's do some painting um let's go here so Ooh. we've got our little painting set up here uh got our got our chill jams going so graham what are you uh what are you painting today i will be painting this uh bone devil this is one of the nulzer's marvelous miniatures models yeah so it's it's modeled loosely after the bone devil from the monster manual but i think actually there's like pretty significant design difference so i don't know um the one in the monster manual is like very white and has like insect wings which is really cool this one based on the way it's sculpted um you can really see that there's like a lot of meat and flesh hanging off of it so it's going to be a lot more red anyway i'm still like i was currently googling uh hellraiser and other images that might give me an idea of how i want to do this um but yeah i think i'll probably just start with the bone stuff and then figure it out after that yeah fantastic i am gonna be doing this one that i primed about a year ago and i have not touched uh <laughs> it's it's one of those that like i just don't know how to to start so i'm not even sure what this guy is it's like a a devil um some sort of like there we go uh, uh like a demon like a pit demon kind of devil creature uh but uh, i think i want to do like i want to make him real fiery um so in my head i'm thinking like kind of that's like again kind of like you with bone kind of like bone black kind of slate uh um rock-esque uh volcanic type muscles wow but with like the fire underneath you know what i mean yeah like, i'm so amused that we both picked devils to paint <laughs> look 
it's Halloween. Steve. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was like, I've got a bunch of uh, like Lovecraftian looking things, yeah. but honestly, I just felt like painting bones and. Meat. I almost. I was gonna go with a drider because I have this drider that I want to paint, mm. but I did not prime it. Technically, I don't think you need to prime these, but I still wanted. I would have wanted to paint this black before I mm. do that one. And then I also have. Um, I have uh, Venom that I thought about Ooh. doing today, and also Carnage, uh, who could be a fun pair to do, uh, yeah. just with like the movies out and everything. But for now, we're gonna stick with the bone, with this not Bone Devil, but with whatever this thing is, whatever this thing's meant to be. <laughs> I think you're right. I think it looks like a Horn Devil or a Pit Fiend. I'm gonna google it where'd you get it um it can't it was a gift i think it's mm -hmm. i think it's an official D, D one though oh, okay i think it's a whiz kids one um whiz kids uh devil pit devil let's try that yes that's it it's a pit lord. Ooh. Ooh. Pit yeah. lord. A pit lord. Good lord. Ooh, there's some cool uh, painting designs people have done on this one. That guy looks like a... Wow, that is... Woof. Okay. So I'm laying out some uh, dirty bone. This is Reaper. Yeah, what kind of paints I, do you use? I use Reaper, but that's mostly because um, they're cheapish while still being good enough. And my bottle it has a dried chunk in the top and I can't get it out. That's so annoying. Yeah. One time I was... Uh, trying to get some paint out and I sprayed like mustard yellow all over my couch. I was painting on, on my standing desk behind my couch watching TV. Mm -hmm. It was just such a bad idea. I'm just pulling out. I, I use, I think is this, it's MSP is the master series paint. I think it's Reaper though. Yeah, that's Reaper. It's the Reaper series, right? Yeah. yeah. Because I bought those, like, kits way back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, the painting kits, like the how-to kits. Yeah. And that's how I got That's how I got. I started. think I bought those, too. I'm a huge fan of Reaper. I just bought, um, backed their Bones... What, which, which was it? Bones 5, I think, was the most recent one? Sure. Yeah, that sounds right. Those are, uh... Yeah, those, those are no joke. Those Kickstarters that they have, they're like, you get so much in there, but I can never afford them. <laughs> okay. I think I got everything that I really want here. Hold out. I'm trying to decide, how. where do I start? Like, I guess I need to start with the underneath if I'm trying to do, like, flames beneath. Boy, oh boy. This is going to be a tricky one. <laughs> I don't think I'm quite ready for how tricky this is gonna be. Oh shit, are you frozen? Oh no, we lost Graham, everybody. We lost Graham, and now my face is huge! Uh, well, hopefully he'll pop back in in a bit here, and then uh, you won't have to look so closely at my mustache. But in the meantime, we're just gonna take a look at this uh, little pit fiend guy. Um, um, sorry, trying to get him back on for a second. Uh, 
Um, cool. Alright. So here's what we got as far as this goes. Let's move this. This is going to get right in my way. Okay. Um, where to start? So obviously there's like these bone pieces that I'm going to want to keep the uh, dusty sandy color the rest of it though hmm. let's start with a bit of when you're building fire do I want the yellow on the bottom or do I want the orange on the bottom these are the these are the things I ask myself. I suppose we want yellow, right? All right. Let's go ahead and get some. Yeah, Graham lost internet, so hopefully he'll get back on in a bit here and we'll continue. Um, I'm just going to keep painting and hop back on when you can. Okay. Let's get some red. This is a uh, bloody red. A bloody red. This is a Vallejo one, I think. Yeah. Vallejo paint. Get that nice milky texture. It's pretty good. I want to add a little more. Let's add some brown to it. see the, the paint colors there it's like Graham's trying to get back on let's see if we can let him in there we are I'm back you're back let me just adjust those and it's like nothing ever happened <laughs> Man, my internet cut out. It's been doing that. That's what happened. We were I all talking I... about it here. All we of us. We all talking. <laughs> all of us were here talking about it together, as one. Yeah. Um... <laughs> this is that was that the third time that's happened on stream in the last few weeks. Yeah, that's true. I find that aggravating. Sure. I got good internet. I don't know what happened. Just. Stopped My working. It's gonna be right in the way if I paint that way. Let's try to do it like this. So I'm gonna get this underneath. Of course, it is you know 5 a.m. or thereabouts in Ohio. Everybody's so guess, using the internet. Well, I just assume that they're like, oh yeah, if it cuts out, no big deal. I feel like, I don't know, it doesn't seem to happen during high traffic times. Right. But anyway, so um, I don't remember if we were talking about anything, but I'm happy to <laughs> bring up a new topic always. Always. Um, yeah, I mean... You primed black. I did your... prime black. Um, 
I only do that with certain minis that I think are already going to have a good amount of black on them. Or yeah. like a lot of hard to get into like crevices just because it, you know, it, it, yeah. it helps hide, you know, the, the shadows are already there essentially. Um, I don't, I don't do black usually with a lot of the, the, uh, the Marvel United figures that I've been mm -hmm. painting. Cause they're a little more punchy. Yeah. I want them to really pop more, but I did yeah. do it for Venom and Carnage cause mm. I mean, Venom's essential. I, Venom's are basically done. <laughs> I just need to, uh, <laughs> paint his tongue and his like white features and you know, that's basically it. That's um, pretty funny. I mean, I could try to shade black. I might like go a little purple or something, but I don't know. Yeah, shading black is hard, but I well, I just went with the gray prime. It was actually already on this thing. I you probably should reprime these Nolzers Marvelous Miniatures, but the primer is so thick. Yeah. That I I could kind of rather not. They I'm pretty sure they dip them to prime them. I don't think that people prime these with a brush. Or if they do, they're doing it with a huge brush. I'm experimenting a bit over here. Oh? On these wings. I'm gonna try to like do some sort of like ombre effect. Just kind of see see what happens here. You know, do a little bit of like a uh, what do you call it? A water. A wet blend. Mm, yeah, nice. <laughs> a water. Yeah, no, I was water, like, I totally see that train of thought. A water train. A water bridge. <laughs> a yeah, just painting some knees here. Painting some knees. Painting some knees. So, would you consider yourself a um, Halloween celebrant? Not really. Um, we actually talked about this a bit in uh, Tales from the Public Domain that we, yeah, you know, ran last night. Um, you just said last night. That's I, funny. I did say last. I night. mean, you you said it accurately. So yeah. I'm not gonna judge. I mean, it was seven hours ago that we started. <laughs> it's wild to me. Um, Hard life. <laughs> uh, but um, no, I, I'm not. I don't really do a ton on Halloween. I, I haven't dressed up in years. I mean, uh, no, I don't have like kids. So, like when I do have kids, I, I think I'll probably dress up with them and do stuff with them. But at the moment, it's I, I love autumn and I love um, doing like uh, you know going to, like pumpkin patches and. Yeah. Drinking cider and you know all that stuff. Uh, I, I really enjoy all that. I just, I just don't, uh, you know. I don't know why I've never really been, uh, at least not since like I did start doing theater work and whatnot. I've never I'm not really been too into, uh, like costumes. Hmm. Yeah. Not sure why. It's funny. I, it's, I've just I can't even explain it, but Halloween has always been a huge part of my identity. Yeah. Like it's yeah. very strange. I, I celebrate it more than I really celebrate well anything else like Christmas or Thanksgiving. That or... makes a lot of sense to me too, just because you you're such a big horror fan, um, and I you know I'll watch horror if somebody like recommends it to me or something, but. For the mm -hmm. most part, I'm not really like seeking out like great. Uh... <laughs> Why don't you like to put yourself through terrible anxiety and discomfort? <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I mean, honestly, like intellectually, I'm like, why do I even like this? But it's just been it's been with me for a long time. I don't know. I, I like I genuinely don't know if it's because my birthday was around Halloween and I like Oh, that's the right. month of October, yeah. or if it's, or if it's the other way around, that, um, like it's, it, I just love this time of year because, and it, like my birthday happens to be in it. I really don't know, 
But I will say that I went to my dad's house uh, a few years back and I found on his bookshelf a mug that I had made when I was a kid. And it was like, you know, like in an art class. Sure. It was green and it had tentacles coming out of it. Mm -hmm. And one of the tentacles was the handle. Anyway, I was like, yeah, of course, this is the mug I would have made. I haven't changed a bit. <laughs> Same old Graham. Yeah, like what kid makes a tentacle mug for his father? Anyway. I have a, uh, like, you know, in like my keepsake box or whatever, I have this, um, mm -hmm. I have this, uh, it's like a story. <laughs> it's like a short story. Uh -huh. that i must have wrote when i was in like fourth grade maybe yeah but it's on paper that is you know orange and shaped like a pumpkin huh nice yeah and so it's like a it's like a 10 page story on this paper and awesome. i i still have it and it's so funny because it's like the story is like some sort of intense like you know, uh, story about like a boy named I, I, I probably Justin or something, um, who like, you know, goes home and his like his family are like uh, different, and he like, you know, <laughs> basically goes around the neighborhood like searching for like a safe place. It's very it's very spooky, very Halloween esque. Um, but uh, I, I just think it's so funny that that is funny. I still have it. Yeah, I, I stumbled across some things like that that I did. And as you can imagine, mine was called The Return of the Devil. Of course. And it involved lots of people getting murdered. Like for sure, if I were to be a kid now and I did that stuff, like they would have put me on a list. <laughs> like watch this kid he's disturbed this kid but it was the 90s and no one really was concerned or cared that i was writing stories about people getting murdered sure in school <laughs> and now i uh make up stories about people getting murdered and broadcast them to the world so that's right gotta love it <laughs> It's, it is just funny how, how little we change. Oh, I'm sure this is not terribly interesting to watch. I'm just putting in bone colored base coat, which probably from the camera's perspective is almost indistinguishable from the gray. I'm just desperately trying not to get my hand in my own, in the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so Started at the... At the moment, mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see, I don't know if you're watching the, the Twitch stream, but uh -huh. my guy is like, <laughs> it looks like um, like a Hasbro toy from like the 90s. It's just like <laughs> black and red armor. Yeah, totally. That is a classic look that never goes out of style. Never. I always bust out my black and red armor. New York's hottest club. <laughs> Well, what did you think of Cthulhu Dark? I really enjoyed it. I thought it was just like a really simple, well-designed system. I really hadn't read, you know, I skimmed the, the very, very brief rules. Um, and uh, I was genuinely, like, in, I found it very enjoyable. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, it, you it's know, it's, yeah. It's just so nice to not have to worry about rules in a game like that. Right. Where like, and honestly, my, my biggest critique of Call of Cthulhu has always been that it's so overwrought. Like you really don't need as many rules as that to tell a story where the characters are, you know, exploring things that human beings shouldn't be exploring. And, you know, you've got the players who like, want to have their characters have those brushes with madness and horror right and so it i don't know it just in in other systems to me it, like it kind of flops but i i love the simple just roll 
one to three dice and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I like that it, uh, I especially liked the, we didn't do it very often, uh, really just the once I think that William did it, but I like the uh, adding a failure or whatnot it is, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think that mechanic could come up a lot more. Right. We're like still getting our bearings of the system. Obi Bert, Obi Bert Kenobi, thanks so much for the subscription. Hey, thank you. You're the best. You're awesome. You're the best around. Obi Bert, talk to us about your favorite, I don't know, games, game system. What do you play? Do you play? Do you, uh, I know they're always on there. Uh, yeah. Are you, you, I feel like Obi Bert Kenobi is some sort of European and I can't remember. (laughs) Uh, It is sometimes hard to keep, like, I find usernames a lot harder to keep straight than people's real names. Right. Don't dox yourself though. Don't dox. No doxing. I, I like straight up got doxxed on a friend's stream and luckily I, I don't care. I have the privilege of not worrying about my personal safety too much. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know. I, I popped in on some Dungeon Master friends who do a podcast about D&D on their live stream and they were like, hey Graham. <laughs> I'm like, All right. guess that's where we are. Phenomenal. Oh, you're from England. That's excellent. England. I guess that make I don't know if that was the insp- I'm sure you weren't like I'm English. Let me be Obi-Wan Kenobi. But the crossover is that you could say hello there. Hello there. Maybe. Maybe. Yes. So good. So good. This dude just looks like a bloody This dude looks like he murdered a lot of people. Well, could be accurate. Could be accurate. Could be and likely, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I'm not really sure I'm going with this. I'm just kind of painting. I'm kind of shutting my brain off and just just painting. No real plan here. I love how many people paint and say, I don't have a plan. And like as if you you need to for some reason, especially if it's just for fun. Like, right. Whatever. Well, it's funny because I did have a plan. <laughs> and you threw it out. It, well, it just kind of evolved into what I'm doing now, so we'll see well, yeah. see where it ends up. But just yeah. kind of just kind of just doing it. Sometimes you just do it. I am probably taking way too much time on this base coat. That's my problem. I don't know, man. We've got so the next show on the stream will be Dish Pit Witches. Which I'm, I'm so excited. Very excited to watch. Um, and that'll be in uh, two and a half hours. Plan to make a plan. Exactly. You know, that's one of my favorite pieces of uh, like advice about uh, DMing that I've ever heard. Um, oh. Is... Um, plans it's actually it's well so it's i i got it from brendan lee mulligan who uh quotes who is a genius gene just the freaking best he's amazing um, but he quotes i believe i don't know probably like general Patton or somebody <laughs> but he <laughs> oh says, yeah i've heard you talk about this plans are useless planning is essential and mm-hmm. i love that i love that i think that's that's so accurate to how i feel when it comes to uh, DMing, when it comes to like my prep that I do, like yeah, I I do it just I don't know I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> yeah, the, it. the process of thinking through things familiarizes you with the situation you're in. Exactly familiarizes you with the things that might go wrong, the the like what changes you can make what things are within your control and then when stuff inevitably doesn't work and your plan goes sideways you still have the familiarity that you developed as you were planning yeah like it almost um you know it's the same there's another 
famous military phrase, which is the no no plan survives contact with the enemy. Huh. Yeah. Like, no, as a GM, this is a pretty common refrain. No plan survives contact with your players. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah, true. it remind it, it, it kind of reminds me of like, you know how like some people write, um, will like write out their lines or something like that to memorize them. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's and real. It's like I do that. Writing at writing it out doesn't really, like like you're not writing them out to like reference them later. Like you're <laughs> yeah. not making the plans. It's literally the writing that is. You know that's the that's the tool that's what you're doing is the act of writing it is yeah. in, like embedding it within you <clears throat> now you're speaking to me because that is how i memorize so i is well I, I also memorize just by like repetition but i have a lot of stacks of note cards with my lines from so many plays on them just wow. sitting around yeah i never i was never a, a line writer I, I had a wild experience while we're talking about memorizing lines. Mm-hmm. Um, so in 2019, I had turned down a contract and then turned out that I got offered another contract in the same season from the same theater. Mm-hmm. And so I had kind of resigned myself to going to look for work elsewhere. And then got a call because of you know some it's always like unfortunate circumstances right but in this case it was was pretty rough situation and i ended up getting offered another track in this season theater season Mm -hmm. and um so i was in canada and i got the phone call i was like oh okay yeah what the heck let's do it and it was a good offer and so i left canada and i had two and a half days to memorize my lines. It was uh, the play Peter and the Starcatcher. Okay. And fortunately, I didn't have like a ton of lines, but it was still, you know, I was like throughout the show, popping in, doing dialogue. And I had one rehearsal. And I'm trying to remember if the director was even there. I think he was. I think he was. I was able to fly in like right away. And I got one two hour ish rehearsal with the director there and memorized all my lines in like two and a half days. What? <laughs> and did my next show that I think it was like a Tuesday or my memory is not serving me at the moment. But yeah, it was like really last minute, really compressed. And you kind of don't know whether you can do stuff like that until you get in the situation where you're forced to. Yeah. Yeah. For real. That's uh that's wild. That was crazy. Lots of lots of random stuff like that happens in theater though where you have just like people have to be really right. patient with each other. <laughs> right. Okay, I'm gonna let some of this dry for a moment here. I was it looks a lot brighter than it actually is just because of the lighting. Uh huh. Yeah. Awesome. It's getting there. This is just like the under the skin layer, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. I'm going to get a little more yellow in there in a second. And I learned all about there. undercoating. There was one time I was painting a fox miniature and I just like could not get the coat to be bright orange. And I realized later on it was because I had undercoated it in a pretty dark brown, thinking like, oh, I'll build up from the dark brown. But that was a mistake. It's a lot harder to put a bright color over a brown or a black. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Inching toward being done with these bone legs. <clears throat> Obi Bert, you still there? If you are, what time is it over there? Is it morning? I guess it'd be like mid morning. Um, 
the UK has different uh, times where they change the clocks. So sometimes I, I run D&D uh, &D for a group that are in London. Sometimes they're on GMT, Greenwich Meridian time. And then sometimes they're on the other one, which I can't recall. Uh, I hmm. guess it's British Standard Time, B BST. But they don't change at the same time that we change for Daylight Saving Time. Okay. Ugh. So anyway, I have no idea. Obi Bert, I gotta ask. Ah, you still BST. Okay. So that's. British oh, summer. Oh, British time. summer. Time. That makes more sense. It's like that hot girl small. summer. <laughs> but it's British summer. Uh, is I have to ask you this. Is Ted Lasso as big a hit over there as it is here? Ooh, I want to hear the answer to this. Because I personally love Ted Lasso. I embarrassingly have not watched it yet. Ted Lasso? Don't even know what we're talking about, huh? I guess that answers that question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that is your answer right there. It's not your fault. Is it is it on uh, Apple TV? It is. Yeah. It's a if you're curious, it's a it's a really it's a, just a really well done show. Uh, starring Jason Sudeikis. Um, it's based on a skit that they did like ten years ago for NBC Sports. Um, don't even watch TV. There you go. See? Um, I admire that. Honestly, I rarely do myself. Yeah. Well, I, I, not with the second part of what you said, but the admire, <laughs> admiration for not, yeah, I, I respect that. But, um, anyway, yeah, it's a, it's just a really. So what's really the setup? I know that there is a UK connection, right? Like he's an American living in the UK. Is that right? Yeah. So he's so he is uh, a, an American football coach, uh, college from Wichita, actually. So like not too far from where I live and where I grew up. Um, so he's he's you know a, a Kansan. He is uh, very much a Midwestern, uh, polite and uh, you know honest and you know kind of gets walked on but you know l l takes it in stride um and, and he's not english he's not english <laughs> just kidding uh but he um so he gets hired to coach a premier league soccer team or football team um not ever having done anything outside of american football um <laughs> but he takes the job due to personal reasons, which you kind of understand throughout the first season. Um, mm. It's just, and, it, and it's, it's a, it's, it's a comedy, right? I mean, it's, it's funny and there's definitely moments and you're like, why was the, why did they hire this like goofy American football coach to come over and do it? Well, and there's very much clear reasons given um, throughout the season and it all makes sense. But but what I love most about it is just how genuine it is B between like the performances and just the the writing I don't think I've ever I don't think I've ever really experienced or like seen a show that's just as as honest like about mm. about relationships and about like I mean I don't want to spoil anything so but you know it's just a uh, it's a really beautiful show and Jason actually won like a golden globe for his performance in the first yeah, season I saw that. which is so well deserved cuz it's a uh, it's a heartbreaker. You know what I recently watched speaking of the UK and television. Mm. Um I know I was I was late to this party but Fleabag do you ever watch that? I have not watched that. I holy shnikes! I've, I know. I mean, I know about the show, like the the play. Um, it was so good. Did the show or did the play come first, and then the and then the show came after? I genuinely don't know. Okay. But the, the show is excellent. I just absolutely loved it. A lot of very um, insightful social commentary lots of interesting complex characters yeah and uh 
and it unfortunately I like don't have committed to memory all the people who are involved in making it but man I just yeah really I know uh, Phoebe Bridge Waller mm -hmm. is she the is main maybe her name yeah she's like she also like produced and wrote yeah. it yeah she's, she's the one, excellent she's the one who I mean she wrote it like for Broadway and, and mm. had it on you know she, she was doing the show then uh, and then I suppose it just got enough traction to that's cool go from there I loved it I uh, I thought just yeah it's remarkable um, her character is like absolutely despicable yeah. but it slowly does two things it you know lets you empathize with her right empathize with her and then it also um, just threw my brush <laughs> I'm gonna watch myself throw my brush on the replay. Yep, there it goes. <laughs> uh, it, it also uh, like l helps you realize that everybody around her is somehow even more of a despicable person. Yeah, it's just excellent. Yep, we uh, we've been watching. Um, well, we just finished watching Dirk Gently. Holistic Detective Agency. It's very Doctor Who. Very. It's from the. I don't know if you're familiar with like the books at all, but it's from the no, guy I'm who not. did uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Douglas Adams. Yeah. It's good. The first season's like really good, and the second season was fine. Uh, and it was. It's one of those things where it's like ah, they left it. Like they left it too open-ended and then got canceled and so it was very like unsatisfying uh, i hate um, that yeah yeah not cool i think it's funny though that we're talking to each other about tv shows that only the person talking has seen uh, justin do you think we have divergent tastes in oh, media yeah. absolutely I think we do. Absolutely. I'm sorry to say. Why are you sorry? Well, you know. I don't know. I feel like it's actually kind of rare when we both like really fall in love with a thing. Yeah. And that makes it more special. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. What was what was the thing what's the thing that we love together? Uh boy. It's a good question. I don't know what you love. <laughs> You sounds, just know what I hate. Sounds sad. Um, I love, you know what I love. I love Hamlet 2. Um, <laughs> yeah, didn't you show me Hamlet 2? I think I did. That's why I brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, I, I thought it was funny. I, I also like, so I'm in this weird, I've been funny. in a phase for like 10 years where I just don't want to watch comedies ever. Yeah. And I, I think it, I don't know. I hate to say that it's not me, <laughs> but I don't think it's me. I think that the, the sensibility behind the vast majority of comedies produced in America, it's just like the, I don't know. It's, it's just not something I'm really interested in or yeah. that makes me laugh. Yeah. Obviously Hamlet too, not necessarily an American produced. I guess in a way, but the uh, who's the the main so, writer actor? What's his name? Steve Coogan. Steve Coogan, yeah. Not American. No, he's not. No American at all. Ignore my yawn, everybody. Just, uh, <laughs> well, you can afford it. Yeah. It is almost five a.m. for you. Uh, yeah. What is it for you? It's no six. Well, six. Yeah. Yeah. Is the sun Pretty out? soon I'll. Uh, not quite. Not quite. Pretty soon I'll go to bed and try to sleep through my children romping around. And usually there's a good cry in the breakfast routine. Sure. We wake up to that someone crying be. around 9 a.m. <laughs> we have a weird schedule where, like, my wife works nights. And so just by virtue of balance... I uh, take mornings off and she usually watches the kids during the mornings. And so it's a weird thing where like sometimes I actually 
sleep in like multiple days running. Really? Yeah. And so I, I try to get a lot of work done at night. Like I'll put the kids to bed. And then while I'm waiting for her to get home from work, I try to like get things ready for streaming and uh, prep D&D games that I'm going to be running either in person or as you all, I think, no, I, I run virtual games as my like day job. Although that's gotten a lot harder, to be honest, since I've been watching the kids during the day and until like eight or nine, it's kind of rough to fit in a game after 9 p.m. Yeah. On a weeknight with, you know, paying customers. Most people want to start at seven or something. But anyway, um, yeah, it's, it's like this weird schedule where I try to cram in a whole bunch of productivity at night and then sleep in till nine or 10 on a bad day. That's nice. I can't wait to do that on Sunday. Sunday, <laughs> Sunday, Sunday. Yeah, that's going to be nice. Um, Cause I, Yeah. Did you fess up yet to the audience about your sleep schedule attempt? No, I don't think I have. I, I might have done it on the, or the earlier stream. But yeah, so last night... Right, so as, you know, the one who's uh actually like streaming physically like doing the act of streaming for the channel for this 24 hour thing i uh i have you know i have to be up for the whole 24 hours of it uh and so with with that in mind i thought okay i will uh last night i was thinking if i stay up late uh mm. last night then I, uh, then I can go. Then I can go to sleep at like you know, three a.m. I can sleep in till like eleven or noon or something, and then I can get up and I'll be, you know, I won't be so tired, like right now, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as I stay up through the night. Um, and I was like, that makes sense. That's a smart plan. You're a very smart guy, Justin. Um, <laughs> I said to myself and uh oh i did stay up till about 3 a.m that morning uh and then i did not get to sleep in <laughs> the the next the next day i uh i still woke up at my regular time <laughs> so um I only got like five hours of sleep last night and I won't get any tonight and my body hates me <laughs> and that's the story I understand it I've been there yeah I don't know how you do this like on the regular I um I have a personality defect which uh, my wife affectionately refers to as the Ferguson fire okay um, Ferguson is my mother's maiden name and she was uh, she was very driven and like had hyper fixation issues and I inherited all of that and so I really struggle turning in or stopping any kind of task if I'm not done mm. or if I'm not hitting like a strong uh, transition point. I really struggle transitioning between activities. Sure. Yeah, I can see that. Do you, uh, I know we've talked about multitasking woes. Yeah, I'm not the best at multitasking. 
not at all. Which is why I keep going quiet every time I start painting. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> um, so what? Uh, so I, you know, we're, at the end of today's stream, at the end of this twenty-four hours, the the final thing we're gonna be. Uh, running and playing is um, uh, Ravenloft, D and D Ravenloft. So, and I, I specifically, you know, I was talking to uh, Jess Jackson, who's one of the other players for that one, um, and you know, uh, we were just kind of discussing character stuff, and she was asking me something about the the world, and I said, to be honest with you, I specifically. I, I don't know much of anything about Ravenloft and I, I I've kept it that way I've, you know I know I would say you know 80% of the different modules that they've released for 5th edition I know them pretty well um, mm -hmm. but there's a few that I've specifically like distanced myself from because two reasons number one it's it's typically the ones that I don't think I'm ever gonna run uh, like sure. Curse of Strahd, um, because a it, it maybe it's just not my like my vibe. Um, like I, I I don't know that I would really enjoy running it as much as I would playing in it. Mm -hmm. So so anyway, I you know I've been waiting for this for this day. I've been waiting <laughs> for for someone, and I figured it would be you uh, to run Ravenloft. Uh, for me to, uh, to introduce well, me to I take Strahd. that as a very high compliment thank you I am yeah it is really good and it's one of my faves and I've run it a whole bunch I'm looking forward to it I, I get that though I did the same kind of thing with Waterdeep Dragon Heist which mm -hmm. is funny you probably were like Oh, I really want to run this. <laughs> and when I heard the premise, I was like, I want to play in this. Uh, I'm not like dying to run it. <laughs> so it's just funny. That's actually a pretty good demonstration of our differing tastes, probably. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm currently running Dragon Heist and it's uh yeah. and I, I'm doing uh the Alexandrian remix. So um, good. Mixed with the the Baron uh the baron <laughs> remix of the alexandrian remix <laughs> so yes. um but yeah i mean it's if you ever if you ever want to run water uh, dragon heist that is that is the way to do it you have to basically for anybody who's not familiar the the core game itself um is split into four seasons and you kind of choose which season your uh like your campaign will take place in so if you choose summer uh you're gonna have certain encounters and a certain kind of big bad versus if you choose you know autumn or winter or spring um but really the best way to run it which is what justin alexander did is to kind of combine all of them um so you're not just like heisting one layer or going up against like one big bad you there's all these big bads and they're all kind of fumbling for the same end goal and you're kind of caught between it all and uh i just it's so much more rewarding i think um well you're getting more bang for your buck if absolutely. you're looking at it from that perspective definitely in early fifth edition there was a desire or a sense that um there should be replay value in the adventures mm -hmm. and i think that's gone away a little bit only in the sense that i think they now recognize that like your adventures are always going to be pretty different if you have a, a good dm who is going to adjust what happens what the enemies do what the circumstances are that develop from the player's actions right then it, there will always be differences but also it's extremely rare that a player will play the same adventure twice yeah. so the replay value is more for the dm to yeah. to like stay engaged and not 
get bored running the same thing. But then again, like now they're producing enough adventures that you don't really need to run the same one multiple times. No, I mean, you definitely I can't could, keep and, up. I, and I do. But yeah, keeping up is hard enough. So I, I like the idea that just now Alexander just like recognizes right off the bat. Like you, you need a way to get all the content that's in this book out onto the table. Otherwise, well, why are you paying for a big? Yeah, absolutely. And time. what he did with Dragon Heist, I had, um, you know, I had actually uh, done with a Storm King's Thunder campaign mm. that I was running for Adventure. Well, it started with Adventures League, and then we kind of turned it into like a just a home league kind mm -hmm. of thing home league i mean a home campaign um <laughs> I have a home league. but basically with the same concept of in storm king's thunder you know you have to go like i think it's what is it you have to like go encounter one group of giants uh and like i forget what but do something yeah not not to spoil it, but there's a thing you need to collect. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah different yeah. layers, and you can get it from any of the layers. But instead, you, you groups will usually just go for the easiest one, right? And it's also right in the center of the map, and so they often like I've run Storm King's Thunder a bunch, like four or five times. I think I'm on my fifth run of it right now, and almost every single group takes out the same layer because of the way it's set up well see, it, and and that's so when i ran it and now he, there's a there's pros and cons to this um because when i ran it i basically i i didn't they still needed to collect just the one thing from the one layer basically but I still had them encounter the other layers in other ways, essentially. Yeah, that's so, smart. So, like, character backstories would bring them to, you know, crossing the hill giants, and then somebody else's would, you know, they'd have to go protect their home against the fire giants and, you know, sneak into the fire giants' lair in order to, you know, secure something. So there was, like, you know, yeah. you're juggling multiple plot lines when it comes to that so that brings me to the the con of all because the pro is you get to ex you get to experience so much more of the adventure and like i think that's so worth it but then the con is obviously it takes way more time and that group yeah. kind of dissolved before we could actually get to a lot of the the meat of it it's so common well and i, I, was... I think it's more common for a group to fall apart than for them to finish yeah i agree i've only ever finished one like what i would consider like longer campaign for D, &D. um and that was like a you, two year campaign you also run a ton of short stuff which I like do. short run which and seems I, to be your specialty specifically because i feel like it's easier for people to specifically because i've had <laughs> so many <laughs> uh, <laughs> campaigns that i've i would typically put a lot of work in you know from the from the beginning from the jump uh, you know i'll typically like make lots of documents full of npcs full of you know uh things like that um mm -hmm. and then you know we we end up getting a couple you know sessions in and it, it kind of filters out or something and i was worried about that with dragon heist with my current campaign of dragon heist it's funny because like they say i don't know i read this i read this somewhere that like dragon heist typically would take like a group maybe like 12 to 15 sessions to play through if that like so yeah. get done in like eight sessions or something like that i was like so my <laughs> uh we just had our 38th session <clears throat> of it and I mean, we still have at least another 10, like, but that's also because my group is super into the role play. Yeah. Um, oh gosh. Just like, uh, earlier tonight we were playing Cthulhu dark and we had like these excellent scenes and character moments. And I was like, well, shoot, I planned like three or four more scenes we could have done. Oh really? Oh yeah. Yeah. 
but that's i'm also an over preparer i don't know about you no I, I, yeah absolutely I, I, I prepare way more than i need to and then i'm like oh yeah i forget players talk and <laughs> i say used, i think i used to be an over preparer and then i i kind of like figured out how to not do it because when i was first starting out i would have these I would basically do, and I think I've talked to you about this, but I would, I would have these like, um, kind of homebrew, uh, yeah, you know, sessions. So we did like, uh, I did a completely homebrew one shot that took like eight hours. And <laughs> I told, I, I originally told everybody it was going to be five hours and then we were all having fun. So we ended up going to six hours and then by the time like seven hours rolled around i could tell everybody was tired but i was like well we I, we can't just like end it here like we have to get to the like you know like the finale you know what i mean mm-hmm. like that i had planned and that was like the first thing that i ran and then like i i did like a disney princess thing but because everybody was so busy we would do we would do like one Saturday every other month um, yeah. for like three total sessions. And we would just call them eight hour sessions basically. And, and I still had problems fitting everything I wanted to into those eight hour sessions. Um, and it was really yeah. hard for me to like leave stuff on the, you know, the cutting room floor. Uh, it's kind of tricky. Yeah. I know. I, I've definitely experienced that. I've experienced that on our our streams. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've developed this terrible habit of being like, this is going to be a one shot. And then we extend it into two. Absolutely. I'm, when we were doing the one ring on September 22nd, mm-hmm. I was saying, no, we're definitely just going to make this one. And then we, <laughs> my computer, my internet cut out. <laughs> and we ended up going into two anyway. I don't know. I, you know, uh, it's never like a, a super bad thing by any means to no. to extend or whatnot if you can. Yeah, I don't mind at all. It's funny because I run a lot of adventures league stuff. Those scenarios are set up to be three to four hours one shot, and they're like packed with story stuff. But you kind of know where it's going, so you know you have to get through the early game things fast get everybody on the same page as soon as possible and you know just try to like hit the story beats and make it an awesome exciting dynamic adventure with lots of changes in tone and what do you call it uh escalation of stakes and all that stuff all fit into four hours three or four hours and they're like it's not easy it's not easy. I think that's why I was so bad at Adventures League. Um, <laughs> I only did it for a couple months before it, <laughs> the quarantine shut it all down. Yeah. Um, but it was during that time, you know, and uh, we ended up doing Storm King's Thunder, and we actually, I'm sorry, we while it was still technically Adventures League, I was running the uh, what's the one that comes in the, the Ice Spire Peak. Is that right? Mm, mm-hmm. The uh, it comes in the yep. essential. Yeah. Pack. Um, I ran that, and uh, and that was that was doable, but it was also not really Adventures League esque, where it was like, you know, it wasn't formatted like Adventures League, even though it mm-hmm. qualified. Um, it was just like a home game where you followed all the rules. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and yeah. tracked XP and gave uh, uh, magic, yeah, items and whatever the other rules are for, for Adventurous League. Yeah, it's a lot. It's funny, like, I totally understand people who are not into organized play and Adventurous League specifically. For whatever reason, I just am. I'm just really into it. Yeah. I think I, for me, I like the feeling of objectivity where I can play a game and I don't have to worry about what the DM says. I can just, I know the rules for how much I have to play before I level up. I know which magic items like are available to me and how I get them. Um, and like, it's great to have a good DM in Adventures League, 
but there's a feeling of like, oh, this is super official because like I have like certificates and stuff for yeah. my characters for certain magic items or what have you. Mm-hmm. And there's, it's just a, I don't know, for me, it's a special feeling of knowing that it's like seals and approved and it's, I can bring that character to any table. So you sort of accept the extra rules as um, the payment or the trade-off for getting to move your character around wherever you want to go, play at conventions and then take your character back to your home game, that kind of thing, which you could never do if Adventures League didn't exist. Right. Right. Anyway, that that was a bit of a tangent. No. This is the problem. Don't get don't get me going on Adventure League. What else are we gonna talk about? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Did you make a topic list? Uh, no, I did not. I was a little busy. <laughs> we were both like Dude, just cramming stuff in just, the days before we started it was, this. It's been wild. It's been a wild yeah. freaking. Week. And then unexpected life things. <laughs> yeah. I know. Oh my gosh it's been a wild 24 hours and it's gonna be a wild next <laughs> 20 you know uh, 19 hours we are in the midst of it we're only 19 hours left we're like a, a fifth of the way there <laughs> uh yeah well you you definitely have the harder job because you're producing them all every single stream Every single one. But you know what? It's all right. It's all good, <laughs> man. I I welcome the challenge. <laughs> so I went to Canada last week. <laughs> it's a good way to start every story. <laughs> There's a whole like personal saga behind why, but um, it has to do with a cottage that is kind of a money pit and that my great 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 grandfather Theophilus Spencer built no when no I'm not kidding this say is say his name Theophilus Spencer yes green and only it's on you. a piece of land called Spencer's Point only your family in Cape Breton Island Nova Scotia which is where my mom's family is all from And there's like a pretty detailed family history. Anyway, I, it's like really a cool place, but it's also kind of built on a swamp and there are lots of mosquitoes and it's like not, it's like not fancy at all. It's kind of falling apart. And then the border closed. So we hadn't been there for like two years. And there was a question about like, can we save the house? Can we financially like keep it in the family? Um, It's rough, but anyway, I shouldn't say it's rough because it's you know, kind of a a uh, privileged problem to have. But sure. we went up there and uh, did my brothers and I. We did some work trying to restore it, clear out some of the like huge amount of belongings from the house. My um, grandmother, who was just, like this amazing person, also just loved to hold on to stuff. And so anyway, we went up there and we're just like breaking our backs, trying to clear out some space to make the house usable and cleaning things. And it had like, you know, there was like rats and mice in the house and stuff because we hadn't been there in two years. It was wild. Anyway, wild time. I was getting like five hours of sleep every night the whole four days I was there. Jeez. And then... Uh, My brother and I went together and it was just one of those weird things where like the border closed down and we're like, well, there's literally nothing we can do. We had flights booked and a whole like work trip planned. Right. And it all got canceled. And I waited forever to get uh, Air Canada to reimburse my flight, give me a credit so that I could buy a new ticket when the border opened. Uh, Just just so much wildness. Anyway, it ended up being cheapest to drive to Toronto. So my brother and I met up in Ohio, drove to Toronto, and then flew up to Cape Breton Island, which is basically the farthest east on the... Uh, it's a little tricky because it's like Newfoundland is more east. But anyway, it's it's pretty pretty close to as far east as you can get in, the, in North America. Yeah. 
Ooh, it was wild. And then we got back. So that's been my last few days. And I was like trying to get everything ready for this stream. I'm feeling great now though. Like we did the Cthulhu Dark game and it was a lot of fun. It was. So, and now we're just painting some minis and painting, painting, painting. What's up, Reb Munoz? Hey! Good morning. Good morning. You're up early. We are painting. We're actually just by happenstance, we're both painting devils. Devils. So let's see. This is, I'm putting a bone, a, uh, what is this color again? It's like dried bone, dirty bone. Dirty bone. Base coat on this bone devil. This bone daddy. And uh, Justin, what are I'm you I'm working on a pit lord. Uh, this is, it looks very messy red right now, but that's because I'm just doing like some, just some sloppy like base layers over on top of each other trying to get some wet pa wet some wet blends going and it's really working i don't know if you can see as well but like the yellow underneath yeah it's really starting to poke through which is nice and then i'm gonna kind of like dirty up the red on top like the little the, the natural armor if you will to make it a little more stone type bone nice. type I'm gonna get a little dirty bone going on over here too. <laughs> dirty bone, daddy. <laughs> Don't ever let me do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Slap happy Graham. I know. Dirty it's... bone, daddy. <laughs> it's 6.15 my time. I just said dirty bone, daddy. <laughs> Oh That's like God. Tobias Funke level. Yes, it is. My absolute favorite episode of that show is when he goes to the gothic, gothic also. He's, okay. He says, take me to the gothic castle. And the cab driver says, the gothic also. And he says, That's what I said. That's what I said. <laughs> and he goes to a leather daddy bar. Yeah pretty great i just i'll never forget the when he's like he's in the the fantastic four uh, <laughs> what is it movie he's in like a fantastic four like movie um <laughs> and he's like the thing and he comes home and there's like a the, to cast a predator uh yeah like waiting and he comes out in and he's just like honey where are you daddy needs to get his rocks off <laughs> 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 the funny thing about that show is that they would go to like elaborate lengths to yeah. set up a a uh, unintentional double entendre for Tobias. Absolutely, it was Absolutely. so charming. You could only, I mean, you could only be so lucky to <laughs> to have that gift given to you. I know that's real. Yeah, rest development's good stuff. I'm glad you Agreed. like it. Read. That's something we agree on. See? Yeah. Although I was I was talking to Reb Munoz, but no, I'm I trying know. to figure out how to say her uh, username not awkwardly. Reb Munoz92. Reb. There's really no bad way to say There's really no incorrect way to say it. Reb Munoz92. Or even 92. I mean, it's clearly 92, but... <laughs> Obviously. Okay. You know what's cool about having a mini painted uh, or primed in gray for a skeleton is that like if you miss a spot, hey, there's your highlight. <laughs> like it's yeah. not dirty bone; it's just gray, so it's that's lighter. That's literally why I. That's that's why I wanted to do him in black. Yeah, is in black, yeah. Maybe. Just because it's like, oh, I missed the spot. That's it's shadow. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's meant to be there. It's definitely real. All right. This has been like the longest. This is a full two hour base coat in one color. Like, I don't know why I spent so much time doing this. This mini just, I'm trying to get it like nice and even. And the mini has a lot of details to paint around. I'm trying not to just glob this base coat on. Glob it. With a, with a huge brush. Speaking of glob, who's your favorite X-Men? Ooh, baby, here we go. Here, here we, we go. go. 
Don't you get know, us started on the Marvel talk. I love a lot of the X Men. I've I know done. Do. I've read so much X Men. I'm just a huge fan. Always have been. You like the X Men mm. like twice as much as I do. <laughs> My favorite is Storm. Nice. She's she's just amazing. Such a great character. Like multifaceted. I like every version of her. Cool. I'm glad that she's not playing second fiddle to Black Panther anymore. Yeah. They kind of fixed that, that like recently, tricky, which I think is good. Uh, tricky storyline, yeah. Yeah, I don't know like how well it was received at the time because I'm always reading behind the times in comics. Same. Because I, I just have too much love for the uh, back issues, the old school stuff. And so I don't read current comics as much as I would like because I'm always either catching up or going back and reading nostalgic stuff like the original Doctor Strange comics. But anyway, yep, I love Storm. I think you should watch What If because I think you'd like the uh, Doctor yeah, Strange I, stuff they have in there. I haven't caught up, but I am watching it. Oh, you are? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I just don't watch TV. I know. We just talked about this. Yeah, I know. It's it's. I mean, I, I do. I do watch TV, but I just don't get as much time to watch as much as I would like. That's the unfortunate problem. Chat, who's your favorite X-Men? Yeah. Talk to me. Also, how do you feel about the concept or the idea that they've been talking about? About There's been a rumor that when the X-Men inevitably join the MCU, they won't be called the X-Men. Have what? you seen this? No. There's, what? There's been talk about just the, the idea that calling them X-Men when there's oh. so many women. Uh, sure, sure. It just feels dated. It, de it definitely well, you, does. You I won't go lie. With something like X Factor or whatever X Force or something like that. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I'd be down with that. The only thing is, like, it's hard because those teams, X Factor and X Force, have such an identity. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Like it, it seems weird to that to like ro either rob them of their identity, or make X Men kind of fit as an afterthought into it. Yep. I don't know. It's weird. It's but it's tough. Like, how do you solve the problem? I really don't know. They should just come up with a brand new name. Everybody would love that. They just Let me call tell you, mutant team. Yeah. Mutant <laughs> mut mutiny. Let me tell you what. <laughs> Let me tell you why X Men is so good. Okay, but first I want to say. <laughs> Red Munoz loves Beast, and so do I, and that's Ah, uh, yes, Beast. Beast is great, and that Dark Beast so. storyline and all that stuff is really good, too. Yeah, Beast is awesome. I think my favorite's Nightcrawler. I'm sorry to be lame, and like... That's not like lame. everybody Night else. Nightcrawler's so great. Nightcrawler's just the, it's just the best. He is my second favorite after Storm. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm right there with you. Alright, tell me why X-Men's so great. All right, there are almost no uh, like big comics, you know, from Marvel or DC, for example, yeah. uh, where you have the same writer with so much creative freedom writing on the same title for like whatever it was, 20 years, 22 years, something like that. Chris Claremont wrote yeah. X-Men. Yeah. And this is what I love about Chris Claremont and the, his editors that worked with him, they were like, we're not interested in keeping a status quo. Right. We want these characters to grow. They grow, yeah. And and like, you can see it hardcore in 80s X-Men. They're like, sorry, this is the character now. Um, yeah. And I don't care whether the audiences are eating it up, like the, we're gonna write the stories that these characters want. It's just so great and like, Chris well, Claremont was really cool at dropping in little details and it was kind of like the um, like Tolkien was really good at this. He would imagine what they what sometimes is referred to as like the horizon of the world. Mm -hmm. Something that's far off that doesn't have to be detailed. It's just there to give you a sense of greater scope and like something else to come. But yeah. then the story moves toward the horizon and when you reach it 
then you have the time and the story demands that you kind of flesh it out and decide what it is. And it's like, like such a cool iterative way to write. And Chris Claremont was like a master at this. He would he would just like put in one little innocuous thing in an issue. And then when they ran out of ideas, this is what they said in interviews, when they ran out of ideas, they'd be like, oh, you know what? There's that one detail we mentioned. Let's just like do an arc yeah. about that. Yeah, I saw that he, on the documentary that you- You watched that watch. documentary? I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. So, all right, so you, you know all that what I'm talking well, about. Well, yeah, I thought you were just like talking to the chat. Of course, of course. <laughs> I but, only chat with you, Justin. Yeah, I know. I'm not here for Reb Munoz 92. <laughs> uh, I love that you collect those eras. That's so great. That's awesome. Yeah, I, you know, I going back to that documentary, um, I found it really interesting because you definitely get that vibe. You definitely get the vibe that he, that Chris Claremont was not interested in, in status quo. I think that's a really great way to put it. And and uh, was constantly driving, like these were stories. This wasn't this wasn't an episodic, you know. That's what that's what so many of those like um, superhero shows like, get wrong. I think is you know, it's not a mon it's not a monster of the week. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. that's not what people want. It's not what people buy comics for. It's it, you. You look for like you. You want the, the 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 romance. You want the the life changes, the death, the you know sacrificial kind of moments. Um, it, which is why I thought it was so interesting that maybe and maybe I'm misremembering the this part of the documentary, but Chris uh, Claremont was pretty opposed to killing off uh, Jean Grey, right? I believe I, I believe the yeah i think that's what they said the editor the or not the editor but I, I don't know who it was but one yeah. of the people kind of came up editor and said like like hey let's kill let's kill gene like like she she gets the phoenix force and all that stuff and then she basically just you know she's gonna die uh it was when because yeah it was the phoenix saga right i mean that's what it was yeah um but I guess he he was pretty opposed to it, uh, which I just found interesting because I was like, I mean, that's a, that's a good logical step. Yeah, that is interesting. I do think that sometimes, as writers, people get in their own way, and that like sometimes your greatest moments as a writer are trying to solve a problem that you <clears throat> aren't happy with, and that to me that's an example of that. That. He was like, I don't want to kill off Jean Grey. And they were like, we'll do it. <laughs> and so he was like, okay. Yeah. Uh, let me figure out a way to do this that's creatively satisfying to me and fits with, you know, the tone of what we've been going for. Right. I admire that. I think that's cool. Bringing it back to Tolkien, not to like keep on comparing the two. But uh, actually, just today, Matt Colville, who is a, you know, kind of a D and D personality head of MCDM and he publishes Arcadia and stuff. Arcadia, which is the D and D magazine. Um, he was just tweeting today, uh, like a passage from Tolkien's letters where he's talking before he wrote Lord of the Rings talking like, well, I didn't really want to write a sequel to the Hobbit. But what I really wanted to publish was the Silmarillion and all the legendarium and like, right. Stuff I'd been working on for decades. But I couldn't really do that either. They said no. So instead, he was like, let's bridge the two. But he was like, I don't know if people really want to read about a hobbit. Like, how can you make an adventure story about a hobbit that would, like, really grip you? They're kind of silly. Anyway, like, listing off all these things that are, like, hard challenges that he had to address when he was writing Lord of the Rings. And, like, what's so funny is that all of those things are things that he manages perfectly as a writer like it's such a testament to how good a writer he is that all of those problems were solved in the way he approached writing lord of the rings and he ended up writing of course like <laughs> the most influential fantasy book ever written right just fascinating to me uh, i'm sure in his mind though he was like oh i don't want to do this it's so frustrating chat that documentary i believe it's just called chris claremont's x-men yeah 
right? It's on Amazon Prime. I believe it's on Amazon yeah. Prime. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I watched. Did you watch the uh, Tolkien movie? I didn't. About his life. Sorry. I watched it. It was on TV, and I, I recorded it, and I was like, I don't know. It was fine. It wasn't. I was hoping it was going to be more about him, like actually writing Lord of the Rings uh-huh. and like that stuff. It was it was very much his life leading up to like the inspiration, <laughs> and yeah. you could you definitely see like you know through the war and through like his fellowship with his like school friends. You could definitely see the influences, but I was just really hoping like for more of a, uh, you know something a little more like where like we i because the movie like ends where he like basically like starts writing mm-hmm. the hobbit <laughs> and you're like yeah okay. which is which is so funny because when he wrote the hobbit he had no idea he was going to write the lord of the rings and in fact the, the hobbit was not written to take place in middle earth which is part of this whole conversation about really hip, yeah he, got- he just wrote it as like a silly th- well he told it as a story to his kids and then wrote it down right and that's yeah they allude to that in the movie but yeah anyway uh, what's funny and part of the reason i didn't see the movie is that the tolkien estate was like this movie isn't really accurate we don't really support it yeah i get the sense (laughs) it's kind of weird (laughs) like you make a biopic about a guy and his estate is like nah i feel like i feel like that happens a lot yeah, maybe. I think did it happen with Jobs? Yeah, well, because they were or like, was it Steve were, Jobs? They were One dueling, like Steve Jobs movies, right? Yeah, um, but you know, one had Michael Fassbender. Yeah, and the other had I Ashton had Kutcher. Ashton so. Kutcher, yeah. <laughs> I didn't see either, so. I liked the Fassbender one with it was. I think it's Aaron Sorkin, right? Oh yeah, that makes that sense. Good. I thought it was good. A lot of walking and talking. Like we're walking down a hallway with a follow shot. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, sorry, I get off on tangents about Tolkien because I'm just like, I'm pretty fascinated by him. And also, I just think a lot of times we assume that the finished product is like exactly how the author intended it. And in his case, it's not at all. Absolutely. All right. I have finished my base coat of one color. Fantastic. Like you are taking so much more like delicacy. Well, it's a, it's a really detailed, like annoying mini in that sense. Yeah, I don't think I meant to say delicacy. That was not the right word. My, I my am a delicacy. How dare you doubt me? It's working at the moment. <laughs> All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put in some more colors. We got to find out. Let's see. I've got some entrail pink. <laughs> you just laugh. I think I'll do entrail pink. Paint that in. I think I'll probably mix it with something dingy. Mix it with something gross. A little brown, a little harvest brown, or leather brown. Yeah, I'll, I'll mix it with some leather brown. I want it to look like it's got some skin on it. Yeah. Not just, not just, um, yeah. The, like, if it's just pink, it's just going to look dumb. Absolutely. Yeah, you gotta do the layers. So first I'll mix up some of this entrail pink with some of this uh, leather brown. That's why I was really happy with the way these wings turned out. I feel like they almost look slightly trans... Well, you can't tell on the video, but they almost look slightly transparent when you look at them like in up close just because of the Mm-hmm. the layering on the colors there's like mm, interesting it looks like opaque and at times and then translucent at other times it's kind mm. of interesting 
I'm full on <laughs> taking the nozzle off my Reaper paints because they've, they're all clogged. It's so sad. Oh, I can't stop yawning. My goodness. Well, you know, not too surprised. Not too surprised. Okay. Now we're going to go in and darken these bits. Just mixing up here. I'll give you a little shot of this. Mixing up some entrails. Mix those entrails, buddy. I like it. Okay. This is tricky. It's just tricky. I think I might have to pull up my reference photo. Yep. We paint minis. We like to paint minis for fun at the butt crack of the morning. This is what I've missed, Justin. Improvising mediocre songs. That's right. While <laughs> mini painting. This is it. This is, the world has needed the green room for this alone. Yeah. Speaking of the green room, uh, Graham and I started recording. Yeah, it's our new theme song. Um, we started playing uh, Baldur's Gate, the classic video game. Graham for his 80th time and me for my <laughs> first. Well, I never finished it, so I don't know if it really counts, but... I've started a lot of new characters, played that first chapter. Yeah, I thought it was fun. I mean, it was just fun experiencing it with you. That's so beautiful. Thank you. I hope that uh, we continue to make fun of it. That's not what I meant. <laughs> what? <laughs> I hope we continue to make fun of it. Make fun of it. To have fun with it. The flesh, the flesh is on his bones. Oh no, what have I done? <laughs> I, I brushed my pink against his fingers. So now he has like fleshy fingers. That's okay. That's a Bob Ross moment. You gotta love those Bob Ross moments. That's what I love. I love for. Bob Ross, not gonna lie. One of my favorite dudes. Good. Thank you for not lying. I actually watch Bob Ross on occasion. I used to as a kid, and I love going back to it. What did you watch him do? Are you kidding? Brush his teeth? Are you kidding, he says. <laughs> I just had to make sure. Are you kidding? <laughs> are you kidding? Uh, hello? Yeah. No, no, I know he was a famous YouTuber. I get it. <laughs> I've seen all his YouTube videos. <laughs> oh, boy. Such a good trick I learned was to paint the layer that's closest to the bottom first. So start with the lowest thing, then add on stuff that's on top of it one by one so that you can, you don't have to be like super neat 
on the edges. Interesting. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like, I did not I'm do doing that. the bone first and then move up from the bone to the muscle, which is on top of the bone. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes. No, uh, yeah. I thought you and meant, then I think you meant from, from like the bottom, like the base of the mini. Uh, well, you could do that. No. <laughs> no. I always paint the bases last. That was full on uh, Isildur meme. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then after the muscle, I'll do the like raggedy skin that's on him and raggedy skin. Well, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I think this is a pretty gender neutral devil. I shouldn't call it a him. I actually, when we were doing our uh, our play by post D and D campaign, where it was like all written, yeah. Which, by the way, man, what a good writing exercise. That was it was really fun and like really different. It was wild. Anyway, um, we were doing that. I had to really remember and focus on not gendering monsters like if this thing is a monster it's yeah. an it baby it is not a he totally. some monsters can have a gender and that's great but like i think we have a tendency to gender all of our monsters male which sure. is well many males are monsters so but well, many males <laughs> many males are monsters many males are monsters um no i had a real problem with that in Dragon Heist, um, calling Xanathar an it, uh, because I really wanted to, because they're like a named character, yeah. I really wanted to give them like a, like a they, a he, a something, but, uh, well, there's probably nothing really wrong with that. I mean, it depends on how you play it or play them. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I mean, do what you want. Well, but, the, so I'm not trying. I'm not trying to say the, it's like the book. That. Like reference every time it you know references Xanathar, it says it. It's really interesting. Yeah. Well, it is an aberration, and also weirdly, I don't know if this is consistent, but it's actually the Xanathar. Xanathar is a title, right? Which you probably knew. I did. I did. Um, I just flashed everybody my Ultron. What? I missed it. Um, oh, now I can see it on the replay. I made, I painted this one like last week. Just oh, it's these. so good, Justin. Oh, thanks. I wish I could uh, watch you paint these. I know. Well, and I was thinking like, if I get done with this pit lord, mm -hmm. what are we doing here? What are we doing? Then I could paint another one of these, but I never got around to it. I don't think I'm gonna get around to it. It's too blurry. What the heck? But I am excited to paint more of those, those Marvel figures. There's so many good ones. And I have... I saw people playing it at the Origins Game Fair. Nice. Yeah, well, the X-Men one... Uh, uh, I, I did a one-wave instead of a two-wave shipment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but those who did two-wave have been receiving their x-men uh base the base game uh How dare they and i i just you know I, I was like i have so much to play and paint with what i got from the first kickstarter that yeah, even sure. by, by the time i get the x-men ones next summer i doubt i'll be done painting these and they ha there's more there's more in the x-men <laughs> kickstarter than there is in this I'm just happy we get Fantastic Four. That's exciting. That is. Making up songs again. Uh, this one I'm actually just singing along to the to the music. Oh, uh, I can't hear it. I know. Well, it's good. I just want to make sure it was royalty free. Yeah, you, you honest. Can't, can't hum made up songs. Does this dude have eyes? Because I don't know where they are. 
I mean, I legitimately don't know where his eyes are. Make it up. Make it up. I didn't mean that to sound so rude. <laughs> It's supposed it to be funny. encouraging. It's make supposed to be it like, up. yeah, make it up, baby. Just make it up, you bozo. Shut up, Ralphie. <laughs> That's from Christmas Story. That was definitely the intonation that they came out with. <laughs> I won't ever stop yawning. I will just turn into a yawn. It is so late. keep having to like take a pause from painting because <laughs> like my eyes are You're yawning yeah <laughs> because i'm yawning yawn You know that they say uh, when you paint yellow, if you paint pink first, it like sticks better or something. Mm-hmm. Yep. Do you ever do or that? orange? Is that what you do? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I haven't done a lot of yellow to be honest. <sighs> God, no help. I know. I'm too busy painting like a lot of zombies and skeletons. Mm hmm. Okay, well, it's not looking bad. Put some yellow down here on the, the feetsies. Oh, all right. Getting some meat on these bones. Lick the brush. Lick the brush. Lick, oh, lick, it's so lick, bad. Lick I know. I just can't help myself. You just love it. Ooh. Gosh, dang it. I got to stand up and stretch for a second. You keep going. Do a stretch. <laughs> I've been imitating a section from a Disney movie that involves me imitating that. Uh, who's that one actor from the 60s who was like, he kind of talked like this. He had a little bit of a weird accent and buggy eyes. You know what I'm talking about? Justin. All right, I'm going to vamp here. He's made a mistake of leaving me alone on camera. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about all the things Justin never lets me talk about. What would that be? <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, here, what's something that I have a strong opinion about? Let me tell you this. I think a movie isn't really a horror movie if it has a happy ending. That's controversial. I'm glad I caught the end of that. <laughs> I was like, what's something controversial I can talk about? <laughs> I'm Rebunio tired says, of... like, what? What's that? Red Munoz says, like, oh, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, most Stephen King horror movies. They bother me because Stephen King really likes to have, like, a resounding uh, ending where 
things can become happy and they can defeat whatever this like mysterious monster is. And I think that's cool for a certain type of story. Mm. But for me, like true horror has to be undefeatable. Otherwise it's not horrific. And I, I, you know, this is me being sadistic probably, but I, part of the joy of horror for me is like watching characters spinning out of control and unable to avoid their fate. It's like a, the determinism or the, the like, yeah, the, the horror being like a slow train wreck that you can't stop watching yeah. is a huge part of what makes those stories appealing to me. So yeah. I get sad. That makes sense. I watched, um, n- not to like totally spoil this now, but I watched uh, The Outsider, which is, I think, an HBO show adapting Stephen King. Yeah, I watched it. Did you like it? I I did, yeah. Um, I found it kind I- of... I don't know how I feel about the ending overall yeah no i loved it until the last episode yeah and it's partly because of what i'm talking about yeah i get i get that i i think yeah i think that's pretty much the same kind of issue that i maybe had with it um i mean truly the best in my opinion the absolute best horror stories have a um maybe not necessarily a twist it doesn't have to be like a twist but there has to be something that's like earth shattering to the character even if the audience sees it coming Mm -hmm. by the end like the character the character's world has to be utterly destroyed or reinvented and one of the coolest ways to do that in my opinion are horror movies where there's an apotheosis of evil which is just a big critical term for like a, an ascension some kind of rising of evil and like if i talk about any examples of this i will spoil them but uh i can talk about rosemary's baby because that's old sure i've never seen it but sure oh okay rosemary's baby ends with a fantastic apotheosis of evil where the bad guys win of course and the main character like genuinely doesn't know if that's bad or good I love that. It's it's excellent. Yeah. Very fun. I'm doing such fun. a rough job here. I'm having a hard time deciding what's going to be skin hanging and what's the meat. I just realized there's a whole section of this I haven't even touched with paint. <laughs> what? Underneath the arms, like here, like these mm-hmm. underarms under like they were hidden by the wings mm-hmm. but see this is why this is why i prime in black with these guys because now i'm just gonna kind of gently go over it with some <laughs> some color and mostly call it good from there i'll probably need to do a couple coats though Well, I would say horror in gaming works really well in one shots and like super limited scope series. Mm-hmm. I think it's hard to do a horror campaign in, for example, in D&D from level one to 20. Oh God. That's, that's not to say that it's I hard think... to do anything in D&D from level 1 to 20 <laughs> it's true it just gets harder and harder but um, it's not to say that I think D&D is the wrong system for horror I think that's a different statement I think that if you want to stick to levels 1 to 10 you can absolutely do great horror in D&D and I don't feel any complication about saying that and people will constantly tell you the opposite 
but ignore them. Granted, that doesn't mean don't play great horror RPGs. Play, you know, Ten Candles and Bluebeard's Bride and Tales from the Loop and Cthulhu Dark and Monster of the Week. Like, play those, but if you have a group that wants to play D&D and they want it to be horror, horror has been a part of D&D for a long time. And there's just absolutely nothing wrong with playing a horror game in D&D. You just have to know how to set it up and what the expectation should be. Yeah. Um, I got uh, the uh, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden as a gift and mm -hmm. I started to read through it a bit and I'm I don't know why I get so intimidated running horror esque scenarios and things like that. I, I don't think I'd be bad at it. I just It's just not your genre. I think it's because I don't know yeah, I just you know, when it comes to action or adventure or things like that, I have so much to pull from, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in my little think tank. And with horror, mm -hmm. most of my favorite horror it could be classified as an action thriller or <laughs> or yeah. as, yeah. Uh, you know, horror comedy, really. Um, sure. So... But, you know, I mean, we've commented before about how, like, most of the stuff I run, especially for for uh, Ghostlight, is it's a it's a genre, not genre blending, but definitely uh, a blending of. I just like blending things. Oh, I know. I know it well. I think it's really fun to watch. And I think watching you like do something that brings you joy, like Zoa or Legend, uh, Tales of the Public Domain, like is so fun. I, I love <laughs> when you like find the thing that like gets your creative engine pumping. Yeah. Um, Reb Munoz asks, what horror movie scared us the most? Oh man, what horror movie scared me the most? Uh, scared is a hard thing, right? Like, for me, it's the Langoliers. The Langoliers? Have I? I've never even heard of that. Have I? It was like an old, like, made-for-TV Stephen King movie. Uh -huh. uh, I'm revealing, I guess, a huge gap in my. I watched it as like a kid, mm -hmm. and that was a mistake. <laughs> It's like I don't even remember the. I just remember like it's like a, like these people have to land and they land, uh, from an airplane, and they land at like this airport, but it's like in the middle of a, like unknown. Like there's like a fog around or something, and that these mm -hmm. these like creatures that come from, are they like, duplicates? I don't remember. I honestly don't even remember the movie. I just remember being scared as hell about it. Hmm. I had a similar experience with um, The Omen. My dad rented it mm -hmm. one night and I was like, I want to watch it. And he wouldn't let me watch it, which was a shocking amount of restraint for him to have shown given most of his parenting history with me. And, uh, he, he knew I was a little bit of a scaredy cat, which back then I loved being a scaredy cat because now I'm like, it takes so much to scare me. Yeah. But uh, I would like run out of the room and then like creep back over and try and get another peek. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, with the omen, he told me the plot to satisfy me before I went to bed and then he watched it and then I just I woke up at like 5 30 in the morning went down and watched it alone <laughs> and yeah it, it scared the crap out of me I bet. um I don't know it's not like a horrific movie in a lot of ways but I actually it just... have seen the omen that was yeah it's probably one of the only like I guess I don't know if you can call it a classic it's not really classic horror but definitely like a, 60s or 70s you know, that's one 70s one of the iconic horror movies that I actually have seen. That's cool. And and enjoyed. I actually 
Nice. That one was. I dug it. You know, it's you know. I'm sure I don't have to make this point, but it's like such a different model of horror. Like it's not even really scary for the first. I don't know hour. There's just like little hints here and there that something messed up is going on. You kind of get it because you know the premise of the movie, and then the last twenty minutes just ramp up. Yeah, it's so fun. I love that. I like that about Rosemary's Baby too, where it's really like a kind of a love story about a young couple until things really start hitting the fan. So, Red Munoz says the link the Lingoliers is they eat the time that has passed, and I'm like, what? I don't remember that detail. <laughs> All I remember is an airport and some monstrous looking things. That's funny. Yeah, so here's the thing, though. Like, I can't really judge a movie by how much it scares me, per se, anymore, because it's a pretty rare experience. So for horror movies now, I judge them based on, A, just like the filmmaking. Like, is it edited, shot, scored, and acted in a way that, like, really makes you feel dread? Mm Mm-hmm. And then B, hopefully I use letters and I'm not just embarrassing myself. (laughs) Did I say A? You did. (laughs) Good, sweet. Uh, Yeah, and then B, like, is it, um, is it, does it strike that, that tone of dread, of doom, of like overhanging, overarching, seductive, like darkness right that's there's it's a very specific feel that i'm just super into and what's the last one that movie, like hit that mark for you like the witch the witch hereditary for sure both hereditary. of those like i have not really, watched hereditary Ooh, baby i i watched the witch but i didn't really watch the witch i it was when i was working at a movie theater <laughs> and I, like worked the movie all the time so like yeah. i saw it but i didn't really like watch it you know what i mean yeah i watch most of these movies i watch alone and i'll often go to the theater if it's an a24 movie especially i'll go to the theater by myself and just be like isolated and watch yeah. it with strangers around me i think the only scary movie that we've seen together was that was like a german film called mother or something <laughs> uh good night mommy good night mommy yeah, I was like, <laughs> I really want to see this, and I invited you, and Me you were on Pancha, tour at the time. Yeah. We yeah. went to like this little art house in Denver. Side Film Center, baby. Good night, it's... mommy. That movie was not what I expected. It was the trailers made it all look like, oh, their mom has a has a bandage on her face, and she came home from the surgery, and she's not the same person. And I, I don't know whether spoiling it would be a problem, but I'll just say that is not the premise of the movie. The premise is not about the mother hurting children. <laughs> the premise of the movie becomes, oh, this mom is actually their mom and they're torturing her to death. Yeah. I guess I just spoiled it hardcore. I mean, that you just sum- summarized the whole movie. But it was it was like so cringe. I I like struggled, very disturbing. I like really struggled to watch it, especially once you realize what's happening. Um, but I thought it was really well made. I don't know if I'd ever watch it again though. But no, Hereditary for me is just like it's it strikes the perfect balance of all the things I'm talking about. It is. It's an antagonistic movie. It wants to hurt you. Like, it does not pull punches. It doesn't do the thing where it, like, cheekily cuts away. 
if uh, you know it does something gruesome, it's like, no, this horrible, disturbing thing just happened, and we're gonna watch what would actually happen with the characters if that thing happened. Yeah. You know, it's like That's right. pretty pretty rough. Um, Ari Aster, the director, it's just he his movies love to just like antagonize you. Yeah. Uh, slight content warning. I'm just gonna mention this movie. Um, content warning is, uh, I guess, sexual abuse. So mute for a few seconds while I talk about that. Just this, this movie, he wrote a short film when he was at AFI and it's about a son molesting his father. And it like does not play it for laughs. No. It's like a full, like dark, dark look I don't know that it's entirely meant to be serious, but it's not a comedy. <clears throat> but it, anyway, it's like, it's a weird take on a thing you've like never really thought about. I don't even know if that would happen. Right. But it's like, it's, I, I think what it's trying to do, I think, is show how, how like shocking and upsetting sexual abuse in a family is and incest in particular in that sense um how shocking and upsetting it is by showing you like the most out there uh like example of what that might be i don't i don't know how else to explain it but it is that makes sense it is very like upsetting and bizarre that he would make this movie and it's just one. It's it, the movie just sitting there being like, "Yeah, what do you think about that?" F you. <laughs> it's like, anyway, sorry. Now I'm going off about a f- filmmaker whose movies you've never seen. No, it's. I. Uh... What was I gonna say? Um. What was I gonna say? Oh, uh, well, first of all, Reb, uh, Munoz, uh, do we have Shutter? I don't know what that is. Is that? Are you saying is that? Is that streaming a service? It's a streaming, streaming service, service for uh, horror for... movies. No, I don't have it. I just can't afford to pay for another streaming service. That's that's my answer. But you know, I think it's really awesome that they're doing it. Yeah, so does it, like, uh, it just ha- has, like, a large collection of scary movies, basically? I think so, yeah. I assume that, like, the indie horror scene is really represented on there, and that that would be a huge benefit of it. Mm. You get to see obscure stuff that's not, like, over-marketed and overproduced. Sure. But I don't know. Do you have it? Reb Munoz? The uh, delay in the chat <laughs> always makes me think of what's that show? Avenue Five. Have you seen that? Uh, I started watching. Is that the spaceship one? Yeah, that's, like that's a dark comedy. <laughs> I started it and I watched maybe four episodes of it, and I just I kind of fell off. But is it good? I love it, but you know. Your mileage may vary, um, it, but in it, they're in you know this cruise ship in space, and there's, I think it's like a thirty second delay on everything, and so it's just watching them try to communicate in their video chats is hilarious. Oh yeah, I do remember that. The thirty second delay is yeah, just they're like trying to communicate back with like the home planet. So good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I absolutely. Um, believe what you're saying, Reb Munoz, that like sometimes you find gold, but other times you find hilariously bad horror movies. That that to me that seems like exactly what it would be, and that's probably part of the fun. <laughs> um, gotta watch Nosferatu. Yeah, Nosferatu is great. I wish I could find the old version of Nosferatu that had the, I don't know if it was the original, but it had different underscoring the like official underscoring in Nosferatu in the current version, whatever that might be, is weird and jarring and not really enjoyable. 
so as someone who doesn't know anything uh that's where i'll stop uh <laughs> <laughs> is nosferatu a vampire yeah yeah it's it's an adaptation of dracula done by germans okay and it's like pretty loose it's a loose enough adaptation that it's not like exactly dracula yeah i think it's german someone correct me if i'm wrong but yeah it's good i i mean my guilty pleasure is black and white silent horror films mm. Some of them are just so well shot. The original Phantom of the Opera is like really beautifully shot, great cinematography, and it's black and white and you're and silent and you're like, wow, these images are like paintings. Hmm. I, I went through a phase where I was watching like lots of obscure black and white movies. It was fun. It was fun. Sorry, I'm just. That was no sprouted. I'm excited to hear your strawed voice. Oh, I don't really. Yeah, just take all those expectations and let them go because I don't do. I don't do like a vampire voice for no, strawed. I, I didn't. I mean, I wasn't expecting like a vampire voice. Just. Uh... <laughs> Just, what were you uh, expecting? An intimidating <laughs> sociopath, you know. Well, I hope you enjoy. Hope you enjoy that game. Curse of Strahd is uh, it's fun stuff. I mean, we're just doing the original Ravenloft, which is just part of it. So, so how does it? I mean, I guess you can't really tell me without spoiling stuff. But I'm just kind of curious, like what the big difference was like when they made curse of strahd for fifth edition it's was... basically it includes the original adventure with expansion material to flesh it out and extend uh, it okay. to a larger broader band of levels okay but actually it's kind of amazing how much of it is just verbatim from the original Yeah. Very cool. We'll see how it goes. That's you know what? That's in uh Nope, not even twelve <laughs> hours. <laughs> it's thirteen hours. Uh, yeah. So, getting the meat suit on this dude. <laughs> I have got to the point of. Here's where I'm at with this guy. So, I repainted over like the chest. Mm, yeah, give it, wow. Like a char charred effect. I'm into that. That's really cool. Yeah. Hey! Is hey, that my first yawn? Guys. I'm surprised. I usually, like, when somebody else yawns, I'll just, like, instantly <laughs> yeah. yawn. Yeah, me too. Usually. Thanks, chat. The scaling! It is really good. All right, I'm going to do a dusting on... We have about 15 minutes left. Do you know that? What? All right, that's it. I got to put all the details on. <laughs> <laughs> We've got about 15 minutes left before we have to uh, put a cap on this so that we can get ready for the next show, which, again, is Dish Pit Witches, which is very exciting. Uh, yeah, it's going to be awesome gonna be a, a very i i don't i don't know what like, tone wise i have no idea what andy's prepping like if he's gonna be like it's, i assume it's gonna be kind of like a silly kind of kooky thing but i have no idea i mean hopefully a dash of wholesome in there too 
Oh, wholesome, absolutely. I feel like Andy is a Andy, a pretty Andy, wholesome yeah. person. Andy, wholesome is his middle name. That's Actually, great. it's not. I don't know what <laughs> you that is. liar! Well, I feel like I used to know his middle name. <laughs> I'm just going to do some dry brushing on this, like, <laughs> yeah. scales. Call Sorry, it I was I wasn't laughing at you. I was, I was trying to laughing. figure out why that's funny. I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> well, I just <laughs> I was imagining like if I Fuck stopped you. where I was and was like, I'm just gonna dry brush it, then I'll be done. Yeah. <laughs> it would be like terrible, uh, like lazy brushing. Um, so I'm not saying that's what you were doing, but I was laughing at myself because I'm like not even at the point where dry brushing could make this look done. Yeah. Uh. I emptied out this old uh, contact solution, mm -hmm. filled it up with water, and I use it now for my uh, wet palette. Oh, interesting. It's just so easy. Just, you know, just squirt it on in there. Keep everything nice and wet. Dish pit witches, which is from the dish pit. <laughs> Why did they not hire you to write the jingle? Man, so many missed opportunities for me. For me. For me. <laughs> they really could have. They really could have done something, but for me. <laughs> I don't know why I'm finding that so funny. <laughs> because you're slap happy. And yeah, it's, like it's genuinely for like funny though. Eight hours. It's funny. It's funny. Okay, how visible is that? Come again. How visible is that? Can you see what I'm uh going for? Yeah, here? kinda. I see some pink on the chest some fleshy bits yeah i like the wings it looks like uh it looks like uh like a flintstones like ribeye <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what we're going for that's what we're going that right there is what we desire all right what am i doing now i've got some more brown what are you doing what are you doing I'm gonna lay down some flesh. Lay your flesh down. As I. <laughs> that's not how that song goes. <laughs> oh no, it is. As I lay me down to sleep, this I pray. That's not what I thought you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> that I'll be a bone devil. Take my flesh off of my bones. Make me evil. Hmm. Every time I walk out of this room, like if we have been taking breaks tonight, mm -hmm. my sister-in-law's dog barks oh, because yeah. he thinks that it's that. someone breaking into the house. And I'm like, Literally, my house, first my of all. My house. Second of all, and I'm just opening the door to this room that I've been sitting in for hours. Anyway, made me laugh. Also, made me cry. Ooh, this is harder. This is harder. Dude will not stay on his base. How many times have you briefly fallen asleep while we've been painting? Uh, not at all, actually. I've done it at Are least five present? times. No, you have not. No, not kidding. 
What? At least five times I have been sitting here like really concentrated, looking at my mini, close my eyes, and then open them up like 20 seconds later, having For real fallen sense? a little asleep. Yeah. That's wild. I didn't uh, notice. Well, because I'm looking down. <laughs> Is that why sometimes I, I think I thought like your internet cut out again? Nope. Just my brain. All right, we're I'm racing the clock here to get this flesh on. Yep. Yes, I've never are. said that sentence before. Well, I'm glad I was here to witness the first time. <laughs> this is not this dry brushing <laughs> is not applying the way that I would like it to. I think I need a new brush for this. We got all quiet. We did. I thought you fell asleep. I'm not going to lie. Well, I'm concentrating, and it's a fine line between trying to put this brush where I want it to be and also <laughs> closing my eyes and going unconscious. It's like <laughs> narcolepsy. Unconscious. I'm like, I try to... Um, Focus, 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 but that intense focus or heightened whatever need to respond sends me into sleep. My uh, one-year-old has started doing this thing where she powers down. She'll just she'll be like, ah, "I'm so upset," and then she just gets quiet and like Phenomenal. lies her head down on the ground, and she doesn't fall asleep. She's just like powers down she just loses her energy and she's like oh and then i'll like rub her back for a minute and she'll get back up that's great i love that she is really cute one and a half to two is like a magical time even to two and a half two and a half is great and they hit three and it's like something changes deep inside and they turn into monsters. Not really, they just like, everything becomes no, cause they're like, oh, I can exert control. Yeah. I'm just doing some quick shading on the wings. Getting them crevices. Oh, man. Yeah. Painting continues. When you said all right a second ago, I thought you were going to call it. <laughs> all right. We're 10 minutes away, but I'm screw this. <laughs> no, 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 no. One of my favorite minis I've painted so far was a uh, flesh golem. In the classic Frankenstein's monster mold. But I had so much fun putting all the like yellowed and bleeding flesh and all the bolts and, and everything. It was really fun. And fun. I just did it on a whim once. I was like, you know what? I'm about to go on Christmas break. I'm going to paint this miniature. Come what may. Oh, I almost sang it. I almost sang it. Mm -hmm. 
You can't. You for can't. legal reasons. You idiot. Don't do it. How many knees does this devil have? 40. getting to that point of the night in the morning where I'm like ah, ah I thought you sweet. were just gonna say it's getting to that point of the night <laughs> the morning and like end it there <laughs> <laughs> it's that point of the night it's now the morning I mean I'll be frank I don't think of it until the next day until 4am yeah n nobody's surprised by that from you yeah, there's just too much good daylight. Not daylight. <laughs> too much good uh, productive time. It's too much good daylight. <laughs> <laughs> I can't determine whether that was a Freudian slip. All right, I'm calling it here. My guy's done. Oh, I see. Since you're done, we can stop. No, I mean, I was saying I'm calling mine done. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> I'm gonna stop painting it now. Yeah, yeah. No, so this is great. This overall, is exactly... I like how it looks. I, 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 here's the thing: it looks really bright red on screen. It's not that bright of a red. It's much mm. more like a like a fleshy kind of brown. Yeah. Uh, in in person, so. Well, just put in like ten layers of red, and it'll. Looks like a chief's mascot on on the screen. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, not bad, not bad. Pretty happy with how he turned out. I mean, how it turned out. See, there it goes. I did it. There it goes. Sorry that I keep forgetting to look up at the chat. Mm, no. Reb Munoz, you are like saving us and making us so happy. It's saving for sticking us. around and chatting. It's just so early. Is it? Or is it late? Wow. Yeah, right. I guess it's That's... what, so what 7 30 for you? It is. Is the uh, is anybody awake in the house over there? Nope. Actually, that surprises me because normally my kids are up by now, but it's possible they're, <laughs> they wake up and they go straight to my wife's side of the bed because they know that she will give them what they want. Cookies? Attention. Oh. Or an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you know, the, the more you actually give it to them, the more they're going to wake you up. And she's like, shut up. <laughs> this is what my life can handle right now. And I don't blame her. She's nope. working full time. That's not easy when you got two kids. It's not easy you know, being three and under. Green. Does someone say that? I think it's like a Kermit the Frog thing. <laughs> it's not easy to be green. All right. <laughs> Graham's finishing up. Here's my end result. A little MTV Cribs going on here. You guys... MTV Cribs? What? Up? I, I was moving the camera. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and it just had a very Cribs vibe to it. That's <laughs> funny.
I just did the thing. I'm going to take this opportunity to uh, mm -hmm. uh, tell everybody, uh, hey, thanks so much for watching. Uh, me and Graham. Graham and I. Uh, no, me and Graham. Yeah, Graham and me. <laughs> All of those are it's valid. It's me, not I. I know that much. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching us uh, paint some minis and hang out with us. Red Munoz. Uh Obi, Bert, Kenobi, y'all, y'all are the true champs of this of this one. Thanks for that. Um, obviously, there's more to the day. Um, up next, we have Dish Pit Witches coming at 7 a.m. Uh, Central, so just half an hour away. Uh, following that, we have uh, the Haunting of Equestria, and then Tales from the Loop, and then D&D Ravenloft in approximately 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Long ways to go before we so, get there. So, we got a full, full day booked uh, up ahead. Um, so yeah, stick around, hang out with us for a bit. I'm going to cut Graham off in one minute. So <laughs> thanks for the warning. Uh, we gotta we gotta call it quits here in a second. Um, hey, and quick uh, reminder too, like if you missed like Cthulhu Dark and you're like, hey, I want to go back and watch that. Um, all of our past streams, including the entirety of this uh, event, will all be up on our YouTube channel in the coming days. Uh, I'm gonna do no not it won't be Sunday because I'm gonna do nothing but sleep like all day sunday uh so maybe maybe look for it like monday tuesday <laughs> yeah you gotta take some time take some time okay graham show us what you got we gotta go all right here it is so far we got some Ooh. flesh with some skin hanging down that's giving me some like attack on titan vibes uh that's am i thing. getting this angle right um go a little bit yeah i'm failing tip up okay it's like yeah, that's good. Looks great. Yeah, it's going to be a bone devil. It's going to be a little more, I think, like blended, bloody, and dingy looking and a little bloody, less pink. Bloody. But there are our base colors, and it'll have some glowy eyes, but we'll get to that another time. Fantastic. Well, as I said before, thank you for watching. Uh, hang out. We're going to be right back in less than half an hour with uh, Dish Pit Witches. So stick around and we'll see you then. Bye.